What I'm interested in my work to bring the tangible and untangible together in a surface and see how they collaborate together. So the work, I start very intuitively. None of these representational images are pre-planned. I don't know what's going to be and what we're going to go. In these paintings, when I started, I start the background, clouds, sky, and all these colors without knowing that the church is going to go there or that. And then that day, which is one year ago, same day where I'm talking right now, today, the war started against Artsakh from Azerbaijan. And that made me stop to paint for a month. I couldn't. So it took a month to, to start to paint again. I have references from different materials that I collect through the years. And this time, somehow, I decided to have churches that more related to this war. And why I painted churches, I don't think I ever painted so many churches as much as in this exhibition. Um, that also taking me back to my college years when we would go in a planner and paint churches. They are 1,500 years old or older or they are younger. They almost like a nature, they almost like a mountain. So it has culture, it has something very, very valuable. And to to paint them because the war is always destroyed them. And somehow you want to preserve your culture and save them. I met Gagum a, a number of years ago, um, and we had been in a number of group shows together. Um, all over Los Angeles and even um, Italy as well. Oh, um, that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so when he approached me to uh, collaborate on a body of work, I thought, you know, this could be an interesting uh, process, but I didn't really, I didn't really know what he had in mind. Um, so we talked about it, and um, what we decided is that because of the way the process that I'm working where I'm adding paint and then I'm removing paint. So what that means is I'll add a layer and then while it's still wet, I allow a little bit of it to dry and then I squeegee it off and that maintains a flat surface, but it builds up a rich uh, visual texture. Um, so I would start and establish the composition and the base uh, and then I would um, turn the piece over to Gagum uh, who would start to uh, interpret the piece and to build in some representational imagery. And also you use uh those tapes, those lines, and I, I remember first when I met you, I was like, how do you do this? And he's so generous and he just give away everything, mm -hmm. but he have those tapes, the way he said how he used. After that, I can't use it because it's, he's so, I mean, if he wouldn't, he would keep it secret. I was like, okay, I'm going to use it, you know? But um, so I said, I have to collaborate with him. As an abstract painter, I'm not building in a specific narrative into the work. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm attempting to set off triggers of experience. So there are cues, there are, there are natural phenomena that happens in the work. There's light, there's space, there's form, there's composition. There, there are nonverbal ways to generate um, in an experience with people. And when I pass it off to Gagum, I get to watch the infusion of characters and forms and um, he defines the relative uh, scale of everything too. Uh, sometimes the paintings, um, you know, like say this one you know, with the airplane in it, uh, it, it, you know, if that was a different object, if that was a mouse or something, then it would have defined the painting as, as a different scale. So 
so it was interesting to me to be able to get my paintings back with this interpretation and addition of the of the figure and um, you know the, especially the animals yeah like for example this piece here those elks and deers they they just couldn't go on the bright surface they just dictating me to find their place in the cold wintry places or that boat over there floating when I do my abstract work, like you do your abstract work, uh, before the material world fit in, um, I look at those images, and those images, they already speak to me how to, we want to fly that corner, or I want to live there, like the way I want to live in Los Angeles now. Um, so they find their place on the canvas, center, corner, anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, after finding their places, the, the other steps become how you connect them because they are the material, they are the material world mm -hmm. and how they get connected with non-material. Mm -hmm. So Well, and during this time too, you've been going back and forth between uh, you know, the city and then, and then the desert as well. Yes. So, um, so you know, that was one of the things that I picked up about the work was that there was this influence of you know, obviously civilization, but then there was this other element of, of nature um, that I do think, you know, carried through from some of your experience out in the desert. During this time when I was painting these paintings uh, about the war involved, I needed to go to desert where I can fill myself with different kind of inspiration. So this painting happened there. That's one of the uh, sunset over there I've seen in Joshua Tree, where I have a place. I imagine myself as a cowboy here. And the rest is very surrealistic. I don't know, that, that, this painting makes me laugh. We do plan to continue this as well. So, um, so you know, this is a marker. This is, you know, this exhibition is a like a, a point in time. And I, I am curious as to know, like, is this the end of like this series, or or does the series go on in a very kind of fluid sense? Um, you know, does are we are we kind of encapsulating this body of work, and then you know, future work changes in some way? I, you know, I don't I don't know yet at this point, but um, but it very well could. We'll see.